See if you can spot this one. G'day guys, my name's Dave Tran and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. And in this lesson, I'll be teaching you how to play the unplugged version of Layla by Eric Clapton. In this video, I'll teach you how to play the rhythm guitar, but I'll also teach you how to play both of the solos as well. Now, if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to take your guitar to the next level, then check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. Now the guitar I'm playing here today is a Cole Clark Angel 2 in Blackwood with Elixir strings. If you want to find out more, there's a link in the description below. Alright, so let's get stuck into the intro and it's really nice and easy. For the basics, you'll just need your guitar and standard tuning and you won't need a capo. So let's start with the intro of this song and it's actually very, very simple. It's just based around three chord shapes, but the timing is what may confuse some of you. But if we just break it down to one simple riff that we can repeat over and over again, then it's actually quite simple. So we're gonna start with two lead in notes. Now for our fingers, we're gonna to need to get into a D5 position. So index finger on the second fret of the third string, ring finger on the third fret of the second string. So you're gonna have your middle finger here ready. And for the two lead in notes, we have the open fifth string and then the third fret of the fifth string. Now I want to note that this song has a swing feel to it, so in terms of timing, it'll go one and two and three and four and... So notice how the end beats are shorter than the down beats. So that's the swing feel. After those two leading notes, we start our chord progression. So our first chord technically is a D minor, but we're going to just play the top three strings, so a D5 of this D minor shape. So we're gonna start that on a downstroke and that's on the end beat after the four. And then in the next bar on the end beat after the one, we're going to hit our up strum. So one and two and three and four and one and... After that, our middle finger is gonna come back down on the third fret of the fifth string. And then this is where we go to our next chord shape, which is a B flat five. So it's a power chord with your root note on the first fret of the fifth string. We're gonna strum this chord with a down, up, down. And then we're gonna move this exact chord shape up two frets. So we have a C five power chord. And we're going to strum this with a down, up, down. So that's our third chord shape. And then we end back with our D five or technically D minor. And we're gonna hit that with a down stroke as well. And to end this main riff that we can loop over and over, we'll hit those two notes that we had in the lead in. So open fifth string and then third fret of the fifth string. So ignoring the two lead in notes at the start, the main riff that we can loop over and over again sounds like this. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So that part that I've just highlighted can get looped over and over again, and that is the main riff. Now the second time we play it, there's a slight variation. So when we're on the C5, instead of strumming it with a down, up, down, we're going to strum it with a down, down, down. But the second time we strum, we're actually just gonna hit the fifth string by itself. So lift your index finger from the C5, hit the open fifth string, and then come back down for the third strum. So. And then we end on that D chord. So the second time we play the riff sounds like this. Now in the annotated tabs up here, I have the suggested picking direction underneath the tab as well. So be sure to follow that. This is just a suggestion and what I generally tend to use. And finally, the third time we play this in the intro, instead of going back to this D after the C5, we'll just move this power chord shape up two frets to this D5 chord, and we'll just hit that once and then move into the solo. If you don't wanna play the solo, then you can just keep repeating that main riff over and over again. So in total, the intro rhythm just sounds like this. One and two and three and four. And 
and then the solo happens after that. Now one tip I have for this B flat five chord and the C five chord is that you don't wanna hit the top sixth string. If you hit the top sixth string whilst you're strumming these, it's gonna sound very funny. So with your free middle finger, you can lightly rest it on the sixth string. Don't push it down, but just touch it. And that way that top sixth string will be muted even if you strum it. And you'll get your clean sounding power chords. Now I will add one thing. When you're playing the D minor chord at the start of the riff, we can play a full D minor like this instead of the D5 I showed you. That will sound a bit more full, but it will mean that your middle finger is a little more rushed and you'll need to get to that third fret a bit quicker as opposed to just having it ready. But if you do decide to do that, it will sound like this. So notice how I still use my middle finger to hit those lead in notes, but then I go straight away to the D minor. And then you've got to be quick going back to that third fret of the fifth string. Next we get to the guitar solo in the intro. Now if you feel that this is too hard for you, then you can just skip this and we'll get to the verse, which is just more chords and strumming. We'll start with our ring and pinky finger on the seventh frets of the fourth and third strings. You're gonna hit the fourth string, third string, and with your index finger, go to the fifth fret of the second string. Hit that, and then middle finger goes under the sixth fret. And then we're going to hit the fifth fret again, but quickly hammer on and pull off onto the sixth fret like that. And in total. After that, you'll quickly go to the seventh fret of the third string, then fifth fret of the second, sixth, fifth, and then back to the seventh fret of the third string. And that run in total will sound like this. And a bit faster. For our next little run, we're going to go 5th fret of 2nd string, 6th fret, then pluck that 6th fret again and slide it up 2 frets for that short run. Then we're going to do something similar, but we're going to start on the 6th fret and then go 8th fret on the 2nd string, hit that 8th fret again and then slide up to the 10th fret. And then our next 3 notes is 8th fret, 10th fret and then 8th fret of the 1st string. And so far we have this. Our next run is quite long, but it will start with the 10th fret of the 2nd string, then 13th fret with your pinky finger, 10th fret of the 1st, 12th fret, hammer on pull off from the 10th fret to the 12th, then 13th fret of the 2nd, back to 10th, back to 13th, 10th, and then we move down to the 3rd string, 12th fret, and then back up to the 10th fret of the 2nd, back down to the 12th fret of the 3rd, and all of that in total. After that we'll go 10th fret of the 3rd string, and you'll just hammer on and pull off to the 12th fret. And then we go 9th fret, so slide your next finger down, 10th fret, and back to 9th. So that's a pretty big run, but just make sure you go bit by bit, and in total it will sound like this. Then for our next run, we'll slide our ring finger up to the 7th fret of the 4th string and then pinky finger on the 7th fret of the 3rd, index finger on the 5th fret of the 2nd string, then we'll go to 6th fret, back to 5th, and then down to the 7th fret of the 3rd string. And that run in total. After that you'll hit the 5th fret of the 3rd string, back up to the 7th with your pinky, and then with your ring finger, 7th fret of the 4th string, We'll hit that, but quickly slide down to the 5th fret. And those 3 notes. Then our next little run, 3rd fret of the 4th string, 5th fret of the 5th, and then back to the 3rd fret of the 4th, but we're going to quickly hammer on to the 5th fret. So that small phrase. For our final bar, we'll just go 5th fret of the 5th string, 3rd fret, and then back to 5th. 
So. And then we're gonna end this with two notes. So open fifth string, and then quickly mute it after you play it, so don't let it ring out. And then third fret of the fifth string. And in total, the intro solo will sound like this. Next we get to the verse and it's really easy. Now our strumming pattern here is going to be really simple. It's just a down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now we're going to start with the C sharp minor 7 chord. So it's the same as a C sharp minor chord like this, except you lift your pinky finger up. Now we're going to play this for one full strumming pattern. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Next we're going to go to a G sharp 7. Now, it's the exact same shape, you just move everything up one string. So that's G sharp 7, we're going to play that for one strumming pattern. Then we're going to go back to a C sharp minor 7, but we're only going to play this for a down, up, down, up. Because then you're going to hit a C chord, so you can play a full C chord like this, or you can play just the C power chord if you want but we're gonna strum that once and then go up to a D chord or you can play a D5 chord as well. So those last two chords are just strummed once. So those three chords all together. And then we go to an E major chord. Now you can play it for a full strumming pattern. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. But I like to play the riff that Eric Clapton does with this E chord. Now for this riff around this E chord, we're gonna first strum it down, and then we're going to lift our index finger, and then pluck the third string, and hammer that index finger back onto the E chord. And then we're going to hit the first and second strings by themselves, and then with your pinky finger, put it on the third fret of the second string, and then we're going to hit the open first string and then you'll lift your pinky finger up off that third fret and we're gonna end this with just a strum on the E chord. So in total it will sound like this. Now you can choose to play that or you can just strum the E chord for a normal strumming pattern, it's up to you. Then for our second line of chords we have an F sharp minor chord and a B chord. Now they're both within one set of brackets, so it means they are both within one strumming pattern. So the F sharp minor to the B will sound like this. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Then our next two chords are an E major and then an A chord. And I'm just going to play this by barring the second fret of the fourth, third and second strings. And again, both of those are within one strumming pattern. And then we're going to play that second line of chords through twice, except the second time round, the E is just strummed once and the A is strummed once as well. So that's it for the verse, really nice and easy, and altogether it will sound like this. Next we get to the chorus and it's based around that main riff that we had in the intro. So there's nothing really new to learn here. The only thing you need to consider though is that the start of the chorus was starting on the one beat. So instead of that first strum of the riff being on the end beat after the four, it's now going to be on the one beat but only at the start. So it'll go like this, one and two and three and four and... <laughs> Then after that, the riff goes back to normal, so that first strum is on an end beat after the four. 
And the last little variation we'll need to know for the chorus is at the end. So after we've strummed the C5 with our down, up, down, we're then going to hit the open fifth string and then hit the third fret of the fifth string. So the final riff sounds like this. So after that chorus we have verse 2, then there's another chorus after that, then we go into verse 3, and then after verse 3 there's another chorus, but this chorus is extended. And then after the chorus, we're going to go into our main guitar solo. Now, if you feel the main solo is too difficult, then you can just keep playing the rhythm, which is that main riff. If you don't want to learn this main solo, then you can just skip to the playthrough at the end of the song to practice the rhythm parts. All right, so for the main solo, we're going to start with our index on the fifth fret of the first string, middle finger on the sixth fret of the second, and have your ring finger here ready on the seventh fret of the third string. So we're going to start by doing a double stop, so that means plucking two strings at the same time on the first and second strings. And then we'll hit the third string, and then you're going to do three more double stops on the first and second strings. Back to the third string, and then end with one more double stop on the first and second strings. So those eight plucks in total will sound like this. For our next run, we're going to start on that 7th fret of the 3rd string, then go down to 5th fret, then you'll hit the 7th fret of the 4th string, 6th fret, 5th fret, down to 3rd fret, back up to the 5th, back down to 3rd, and then we end that run on the 5th fret of the 5th string. After that run, we're going to play one more note to end this bar, and it's just back up to the 3rd fret of the 4th string. And that run in total. For our second line of tab, we're going to take our index and middle finger and put them onto the 12th and 11th frets of the 3rd and 2nd strings. Now again, we're going to be playing more double stops, so you're going to be plucking two strings at the same time. Now let's break this up into a small chunk. There's just three strums. The first time you strum, you're actually going to slide up to 13th and 14th frets. So it's just two frets up. And then you'll pluck these notes two more times. So those three plucks in total. So that small chunk of three plucks is going to be repeated six times, which sounds like this. To end this second line of tab, we're going to go 13th fret of the second string, 15th fret, and then 12th fret of the third, but hammer on to the 14th quickly and then back to the 12th fret. So that's more run. All right, we get to our third line of tabs and this next run's quite long, but let's take it bit by bit. So 10th fret of the third string, 12th fret of the fourth, back to 10th of the third, 12th, and then 10th fret of the second, 13th fret of the second, then up to the 10th fret of the first, 12th fret of the first, then back to the 10th fret, but we're gonna hammer on and pull off. Then 13th fret of the second, 10th fret of the first, and back to 13th fret of the second. So that run in total. For our next bar, we're gonna hit the 10th fret of the second string. Now you're gonna pluck this once and then mute it shortly after. We're going to play that same note again, but twice, and remember to mute it after, and then you're going to pluck it another time just by itself. And then we're going to go up to the 11th fret, do the exact same thing. Then we'll go back to the 10th fret, and then 12th fret of the third string. So that bar in total. Then you're going to go down to the 10th fret of the third string, pluck it out once and mute it. Then 9th fret, mute it. Then you're going to go down to the 7th fret, pluck it and hammer on to the 9th. Lift it and then hit that 7th fret again. And then to end this 5th fret of the 3rd string, 7th fret of the 4th, 
with your ring and then with your pinky seventh fret of the third string. So last three notes. And that's gonna take us to our next phrase. But in total for this third line of tab, For our fourth line of tab, we're going to go up to the fifth fret of the second string, sixth fret, back to fifth, but hammer on and pull off, seventh fret of the third, fifth fret, and seventh fret of the fourth, sixth, fifth, third fret, fifth fret, back to third fret, and then end on fifth fret of the fifth string. So that run in total. After that, we have two notes, 13th fret of the first, and then 10th fret. For our next phrase, you go 13th fret of the second, 10th fret of the first, 12th fret of the first, back to the 10th, but you're gonna quickly hammer on to the 12th, then back to 10th fret of the first, and end on the 13th fret of the second. So that phrase in total. And then we have three notes after this. So 10th fret of the second, 13th fret of the third, and then back to 10th fret of the second. And in total for this fourth line of tab. For our fifth line of tab, we're going to start with our index finger barring the 10th fret of the 1st and 2nd strings. You're going to hit the 1st string, 2nd string, and then ring finger comes up to the 13th fret of the 1st, and then end on the 10th fret of the 1st string. So there's just 4 notes there. And then we have the 13th fret of the 2nd string just by itself. And then we're going to go up to the 15th fret of the 1st string, Hit that and pull off to the 13th fret. And then go back up to the 15th fret. So that quick phrase. After that we have two notes, so 15th fret and then 13th fret of the first string. And so far. For our next run of notes, it's 14th fret of the third string, 15th fret of the second, 12th of the 1st, 13th fret, and then 15th fret. So that run. After that last note, make sure you mute it. Then we have two quick notes, so 13th and 15th of the 1st string, and then another two quick notes, so 12th and 13th of the 1st string. In the last section, and all together for this 5th line of tab. For our final line of tab, we're going to start with the 15th fret of the 2nd string, pluck that and then go down to 13th fret. Make sure you mute those strings after that 2nd note. The next run of notes starts on the 12th fret of the 3rd string, 10th fret and then 13th fret of the 2nd, back to the 12th fret of the 3rd and up to 10th fret of the 2nd, back to 12th fret of the 3rd, 10th fret and then end on the 12th fret of the 4th string. So that run. For our next bar, we're going to play some double stops. So index finger bars across the 10th fret of the 3rd and 2nd strings. We're going to pluck those two strings and then quickly slide your index finger down to the 9th fret of the 3rd string and your ring finger will play the 10th fret of the 2nd string. We're going to hit these two notes twice and then you'll slide your index finger down to the 7th fret of the 3rd string. We're going to pluck those two strings but slide your index finger up two frets. Like that. Then you're going to pluck these two notes again but with your free middle finger hammer on to the 10th fret. Like that. And so far. 
And then after that hammer on, we're going to go to the 7th fret, 5th fret of the 3rd string, and then 7th fret of the 4th, 6th fret, 5th fret, and then end on the 3rd fret of the 4th string. And those last two bars. And that's it for the solo. So in total, the solo will sound like this. So that's everything you need to know for the unplugged version of Layla. Now to recap, it's actually a very simple song. For the rhythm, you just need to learn that main riff and the verse, and that's pretty much it. And then there's two guitar solos. So now I'll be playing through the song in its entirety and I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. So feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
Thanks guys, hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to take your guitar to the next level, then check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. As always, it would mean the world if you could hit that like button, hit subscribe, and click the little notification bell as well so that you don't miss out on my updates. Please leave your thoughts, comments, questions, and requests down below, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.